Hi, this is Dave from javacodejunkie.com and in this video we're going to look at the HBox Layout Manager in JavaFX. In our Eclipse IDE we're going to create a new project. We're going to call it HBox Explorer. And we're going to open up, as always, the main Java file. The HBox Layout Manager is a horizontal box and it lays out all of its children or all of the controls or nodes that it's responsible for in a single horizontal line. So we're going to create one. And I'm also going to create three buttons to add to the layout manager for the purposes of illustration. So we'll call those button one, button two, and button three. Organize the imports. Let's add them to the HBox layout manager. Create a scene. Adding the H box as the root. And we'll make that 400 wide by 200 height. Add the scene to the primary stage and show the primary stage. Let's run that. And we get three buttons, one, two, and three, all at their preferred length since we haven't set a minimum, a maximum, or a preferred size. They take the size based on the content of the text, the one, the two, and the three that's in each of them. And they're not spaced within the layout manager because we haven't, haven't added any constraints to that for spacing and padding and whatnot. For each of these, I'm just going to set a preferred width so they're all the same size. And instead of just creating the horizontal box layout manager with the default constructor, there's another constructor that takes an argument for the amount of spacing between components within the layout manager. So I'm going to put 10 in there, that'd be, and that will signify 10 pixels. Let's run that again. So you see now they're all the same width, 75 pixels wide, and they have a little bit of space in between them. And if we change the width or the height or both of the window, nothing changes as far as the three buttons. Although when we do minimize, they do get smaller to a certain point. So the horizontal box layout manager has a couple of optional constraints that I'd like to talk about. The first is the ability to set a margin around each individual child node within the layout manager. That's accomplished by calling a static method on the class itself. So for the first one, if we do that for button one, you'll see that we have 10 pixels additional space all the way around button one. Now we could specify, you know, for the top, right, bottom, and left of these, we could specify individual different sizes. The 
which again just changes the amount of spacing or the margin around each of the four sides. But for now, I'm just going to specify the same size around all four sides of each individual component, each of the three buttons. So we'll do that again for button two and for button three. And then if we take off the original 10 spaces when we created it, it starts to look much better. So the second optional constraint is the ability for nodes within the horizontal box layout manager to grow to occupy the available space. And that's also accessed by using a static method of the HBox class. And the second optional constraint is the ability for individual nodes within the HBox Layout Manager to grow horizontally. So let's take a quick look at the Java doc for that. So hGrow. So we have the ability to set the horizontal grow priority for a child contained by an HBox. And if this priority is set, the HBox will use the priority to allocate any additional space if the HBox is resized larger than its preferred width. So if multiple HBox children have the same horizontal grow priority, the extra space is split evenly between them. If no horizontal grow property is set on a child, the HBox will never allocate additional horizontal space if it's available. So let's look at what that means in practical terms. So hbox dot set h grow priority dot always and I'll do this for the other two as well using the same value of always. If we make it grow, you would think that it's going to grow because they all said always, but it won't because we have set the preferred width at 75. If I were to remove the setting of the preferred width, we run it again. Even though we haven't explicitly set a preferred width, the preferred width is calculated based on the content of the button. So again, it will not grow. In order to enable the buttons to grow, we have to set the maximum width for each of the buttons. So let's do that. Max width. Let's, for this one, make it 200. And for button two, make that one 300. And for button three, we'll make that 400. Now let's run and see. So initially the space is allocated to each of the buttons equally because they all have the priority dot always set and that's based on the preferred size of the horizontal box which is laid out within the scene which has a specific size, that's a specific width. Now if we were to increase the available horizontal space by resizing you'll see that they start to resize and when we get to a certain point the first button stops getting any bigger. That's because it has reached its maximum size of 200 pixels. If we continue to resize we'll see that the same thing happens to button number two again because it's reached its maximum of 300 pixels. 
And again, once button number three has reached its maximum size, it stops growing. So let's look at how the sometimes is different than the always. So we have maximum sizes of 200, 300, and 400 set for our three buttons. Let's change the priority on button one to sometimes. We'll run that again, and we'll see now the button one will stay at its preferred width, and it will not begin to grow until these two have reached their maximum horizontal width, which is be 300 and 400 pixels. So once two and three will continue to grow, two will stop when it gets to 300, three will stop when it gets to 400, only then will button one begin to grow. And again, it will stop when it reaches its maximum. The buttons or the nodes with priority dot always get the preferential treatment when it comes to occupying the additional horizontal space. Only when they have gotten the, the maximum amount of space that they require will any other nodes with a lesser priority being either a sometimes or a never be taken into consideration. And what if we wanted to not set a maximum, and in some cases that this may be useful, what if you did not want to set a, a practical maximum limit in terms of the, the number of pixels? Well, we do have the ability to use a constant from the integer class, max value. And the max value for an integer is for practical purposes outside of, of any screen size that you're ever going to encounter, I think. So let's change this back to always as a priority for button one. We have the priority always for button two and priorities always for button three run. And now we should see that button one continues to grow. Buttons two and three only grow until they've reached their maximum horizontal width or their maximum width. Button one will continue to grow to occupy any additional horizontal space. So we could again use the integer dot max value for all three of them. And we could uh, have the available space allocated equally among all three. In this case, they will all continue to grow and equally so they each occupy one third of the available horizontal space. And one last thing that I'd like to show you, and it's something that comes up very frequently, and if you've done any searching on the internet for solutions to things like this, you'll see that people search for it quite often. You'll see it a lot on uh, Stack Overflow and uh, sites such as that is the ability for a node to float to the right side of the screen. And we do that by adding a spacer value before the node that we want to push all the way to the right. So let's create a new region. And we will set the horizontal grow on that to priority.always. We'll add that to the H box just before button three. I'm going to change the horizontal grow priority on these to sometimes. And run. So you see one and two and then a big space because the region that we've set up has a horizontal growth priority of always, and it will consume any available space in the layout manager. So if we were to resize the layout manager horizontally, we will see that three appears to always float to the right. And that's because of the invisible spacer, the region area that we've put in 
before button number three. Please leave your comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to learn of new content when I post it. Thanks for watching. Take care, and we'll see you again next time.